the woman with the issue of blood. In the Old Testament, when you have an issue with blood, you are ostracized. You are a castaway. You are relegated to the background. According to the Levitical order and according to the Levitical law, you are not supposed to be even in the midst of people. You cannot eat with anybody. Because when you eat with somebody, that person is defiled. And that person will be thrown outside the city. When you sit on a chair, nobody is supposed to sit on the same chair. Yeah. You cannot lie on the bed and somebody comes to lie on the same bed. Mm -hmm. And so the woman with the issue of blood, she wasn't in the midst of people. Mm -hmm. She was ostracized and she was outside the gate of the city. Mm -hmm. Because she had been classified as an abomination. Yes. And the Bible says she heard that Jesus was in town. And the Bible says that she purposed in her heart that she was going to hold the garment of Jesus. Mm. Now, the Bible makes us understand that crowd have surrounded Jesus. Mm. Now, in the New Testament, when the Bible talks about crowd, it is more than 3,000 people because they only count the men. They don't count women and children. Mm. And so you got to understand that the crowd that was surrounding Jesus was over 6,000 people. Mm. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, because the woman has been bleeding, anytime you bleed so much, you become anemic. Yes. And you don't have strength. Mm. And so, the question is this. How did the woman penetrate through the crowd and was able to hold the garment, the end of the garment of Jesus. This is what happened. Can I wear this thing? Yes. Can I preach it like I feel? Yes. This is what happened. Because the woman was a castaway. Because the woman has been classified as an abomination and as an entity. When the woman came out of the gates of the city and she was coming, the crowd saw her coming. And because of the Levitical law, if you don't know and this woman's body touches you, you are defiled. And they will throw you outside the city. And so this was what happened. When the woman was coming, the crowd saw her and they started creating space. They started creating, hey, your trouble will bring you your breakthrough. Your trouble will create space for your mirror. Amen. They started creating space for the woman. Yeah. And so the woman doesn't need to struggle, doesn't need to fight to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. She walked <coughs> in and everybody was looking on. And she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, who touched you? Hey, if you are going to receive something from God, you have to touch him with a difference. Yes. Everybody was touching him, but this particular woman touched him, and the virtue left him. And he said, who touched me? The disciples said, what do you mean by who touched you? You are in the midst of crowd, and everybody is touching you. And so what do you mean by that? He said, somebody has touched me with a difference. Beloved, today your trouble, your challenges, your difficulties, yes. your pain, yes. your lamentation yes. is bringing you your miracle. Amen. I don't know who I came to talk to this morning, but the glory of God is about to overshadow you. The glory of God is about to overtake you. The people that thought that you will not rise up, right in front of them, God will begin to lift you up. He will take you out of obscurity and bring you to a pedestal that everybody will see you and know and say that of the truth. The Lord has blessed him and the Lord has blessed him. God will lift you up as a trophy of his grace. God will lift you up as a trophy of his miracles. God will lift you up as a trophy of his blessing. God will lift you up as a trophy of his glory. This is not the end of you. Amen. It is not. 
it is not the end of it. In fact, it is just the beginning. A new chapter is being opened in your life. A new page is being opened in your life. Amen. You are here, you are saying that I have been through so much and I am tired. God is going to give you double for every trouble you have. Amen. Double blessing, double prosperity, double elevation Amen. for everything that you have been through. Amen. No wonder the other day Moses prayed and prayed. In Psalm 91, the verse number 15, he said, God, for the years wherein we have been afflicted, for the years wherein we have been troubled, give us divine compensation. Yes, Jesus. For the years. For the years wherein we have seen shame. For the years wherein we have been humiliated and we have been looked down upon. And we have been walked of all, and we have been spitted of all. God divinely compensates us. Amen. There is somebody here that needs divine compensation. Yes. For all the troubles that you have been through, for all the challenges that you have been through, yes. for all the storm that you have been through, God wants to divinely compensate you. This is not the end of you. Amen. Let me tell you, God has a plan for you. And the plan that God has for you, it is not the plan of man, it is the plan of God. God is watching over you. God is watching over you. When they have a family meeting, they don't call you because of what you are going through. When you give a suggestion, your suggestion doesn't matter. Your voice is not heard. But today, God is remembering you. God is remembering you. God is bringing you to that place, to that place of blessing. To that place that everything about you will matter. Amen. God is bringing you to that place. He is bringing you to that place.